Hi there, this is Kush from Creative Pad Media. This video is going to be about how to promote your photography business. We'll be looking at six different advertising strategies to do this. So let's say if you have maybe a studio, okay, that you want to promote uh, to your prospective uh, studio portrait clients, or maybe your, you provide services like you're a food photographer, uh, maybe an event photographer, like a wedding photographer, or maybe you even provide editing services like this. Anything that relates to photography and you provide some kind of service, you can use these six strategies that I'll be showing you to promote your business. Okay, so the six strategies that we're going to be looking at in this video are SEO, which is search engine optimization, Google ads, Facebook ads, Google My Business listing, directory listing, and offline marketing also. These first four are going to be very important for some people even the fifth and sixth can be important we'll see when the time comes now for each strategy i'm of course going to be telling you what this strategy is how it works also i'll be giving examples whenever i'm showing you each strategy i'll, give, I'll be giving examples from my own business how this works uh, for me here at creative pad media my own photography business and also i'll be talking about the pros and cons of each technique okay and finally at the end of this video i'll also be sharing some resources with you which will help you further when it comes to implementing these strategies in case you want to do this for your own business so let's start with the first one which is uh, search engine optimization this is probably going to be the most beneficial for everyone as you're going to see when we discuss the pros and cons but before we reach to that part first of all let's try to actually go to google and try to understand how this actually works so as the name suggests search engine right which is the pop most popular search engine it's google and we are optimizing our website like our photography website to rank higher on google so let's take an example to understand this so let's say if i was to go to google and if i was to type in photo studio near me okay now at creative pad media one of the things apart from creating courses that i do is that i have a studio and i shoot you know i have got these clients for these portrait shoots okay so how can i get to these people so the thing is you don't get to them the best strategies are those where the people come to you okay and that's where seo comes into play so seo means that let's say if someone is typing in a query in google right people are always typing in something in the google search bar so let's say if someone is typing in photo studio near me now i would like my website to rank for this we'll also be seeing why have i chosen this particular query have i am, am i just writing a phrase like this or is there a science behind in choosing this keyword also we'll also be talking about that but the point is this okay right now let's say someone has come and typed this and i'm hoping that the results that they see on top will be of my own website so the first thing that you're going to see when someone types in like this are the local Google My Business results like this. And you can see even here, my business is ranking on top. And this has got to do with a lot of factors, okay? Like how near this place is geographically to the person who's typing this, okay? And also how strong this profile is and a lot of things go into play, okay? But we'll talk more about this part in the Google My, Bisting, uh, Google My Listing strategy, which was the fourth strategy, okay? Right now, we're more concerned about these results that we see here. These are the website results that you start to see, okay? And here also, if I go right now, you can see that my website is ranking within the first top five results, okay? Ideally, of course, you should be on number one, okay? But it's not always possible, but if you're here, I would say amongst the top five, there's a good chance that you will now start getting people who click on such a link and then they go to the page that you have on your website and they can book a shoot with you, okay? I'll also be talking about later on in this video, uh, if you don't have your website, what you can do. So all these little things will be seen later on. Now, going back here, what is the advantage of this? First is that people are typing some keyword related to your service so that means they're already looking for a service like this that means someone who typed this they are looking for a portrait shoot right so it's already you get a targeted person who is in need of this service and your now task is to just reach out to them by ranking high on google so you're getting a very targeted person who is just about to basically avail your service okay so that means you're not going to really you don't need to convince them. They're already convinced and they're typing in. So that's one good thing, okay? The second thing is SEO is completely free. You don't really have to pay anything, right? These are, we're not running ads to rank for this keyword. So this is completely free because you have 
optimized the page that I showed you. So in my case, I've optimized the page so that it ranks for this particular keyword, okay? Also, I just wanna talk about why put particularly this keyword, you know, why not something else? So SEO also involves keyword research first, okay? So I'm just gonna give you a small example of this. So if I was to go to Google and I type in Google Keyword Planner, this is actually a tool that Google gives us where it can tell you which keyword is popular, like which is being typed a lot. For instance, let me just take you inside this tool. For this, to access this tool, you need to have a Google Ads account. Right now, don't worry about all these things. Like I said, towards the end of the video, I'll be showing you about some resources which teach you all this in a step-by-step -step manner. Right now, my whole idea is to just kind of give you an overview of the different techniques that I'm discussing here, okay? So let me just sign into my account so that I can reach to this particular keyword tool, okay? So I've been able to sign into my account and if I go on this option which says discover new keywords and then what I can do is I can just type in some keyword related to the service that I offer. So let's say uh, what do I think would people be typing in who are looking to come to a studio for a shoot, okay? So how did I come to that keyword photo studio near me? So first of all I can change the location so I don't want by default, it might be set to your country. But of course, since if I have a studio, and usually most of the photography services are going to be local in nature. So I want to see how many people in my city are typing in. So I'm going to select Pune. That's where uh, I'm, I'm in India right now. And uh, so I've selected Pune here. And then keyword research can take a bit of trial and error to find that right keyword. But right now, I just want to show you if we type in the same thing, okay? Photo studio near me. If I just say get results, you want to see that it shows you how many average monthly searches this particular keyword gets. So literally Google is telling us that almost 10,000 to 1 lakh people are, it doesn't give you the exact figure, but it's still a very high figure. These many people are typing in this keyword in Google every month and that's just in the city of Pune. So you can see like a lot of people you can target if you are able to rank on top and that's free traffic for you free prospective customers for you. This doesn't involve any sort of cost. Now, SEO is not that easy. You really have to learn this skill because first of all, it involves a lot of keyword research. How do you exactly do this? Right now, I've just shown you directly a keyword, but you first have to figure out which keywords you want to rank for. Then you have to have a website and then you also need to create an optimized page so that Google starts ranking it, okay? So again, I'll be talk I have a SEO course which I'll be talking about later on towards the end of this video. But the point is you should know about this strategy. I've put it as number one because this anyone can do, okay? This doesn't involve any kind of expenditure. However, there are gonna be certain strategies which will involve you to pay some money. So let's also discuss those. So let's say if you're someone and you say, Kush, you know what you, I kind of understood what you said about SEO, but I just feel that is going to take a lot of time and a lot of effort. And that's true with SEO, by the way. SEO, even after you've optimized everything, it can take a bit of time for your website to rank. Okay, sometimes even like three to six months to one year. So you have to be really patient with SEO. It's just that the good part is it's free. But let's say you say, Kush, you know what? I want things to happen right now. I don't care. And I don't have that much time that I want to wait for SEO. Neither do I want to put in that effort. That's where Google Ads can come into play. So if you remember, I just showed you that I was logging into my Google Ads account. And what you can do is if you're willing to give Google some money, you can actually Tell Google that when someone types in this, you know what, just show my ad. And your ad is something that will come right on top here. So right now we're actually not seeing any ads for this particular keyword. That means nobody's running right now any ads for this. But let me just type in something else just to show you how a Google ad looks like, okay? So just to give you an example, I'm typing something which is not related to photography uh, because I did type in a few terms and I was not seeing any ads. That means a lot of people are not running photography related ads right now. Okay, but oftentimes they do run also. But right now I'm just taking a different example. Let's say if I was to type bike servicing near me. Okay, so let's say I'm looking to get my bike serviced. And then if I just go down here, somewhere either down or on top, but on this main first page, you can see this thing, okay, which says sponsor. This is a Google ad. Now this doesn't, it. you don't really have to, you know, optimize your page or do anything else. No, you just need to pay Google and run this ad, okay? So sometimes this ad might be seen right on top here. And if that, you might have to pay slightly more. That's how Google ads work. If you're uh, willing to slightly pay more, you can rank right here on top. And that means you can start to get traffic 
and you're hoping that once you know you've basically been put even above the SEO results and you're hoping that it'll give you a return on investment in the future. But again, Google Ads is also a proper skill. And at the end of this video, okay, I'll be telling you about one resource that if you don't want to do all this on your own, you know, I'll be showing you one good resource where you can find freelancers who can easily create ads for you also completely from scratch. So you don't have to learn these skills on your own. The important thing is that you should know that something like Google Ads also exists, okay? Similar to Google Ads are Facebook Ads. So that is strategy number three. So let's quickly also see how a Facebook ad looks like. So I've just logged into my Facebook account and you must have often seen that you see Facebook ads on the timeline. So here, for example, you can see this again, this word which says sponsor. That means we're looking at an ad right now. Right now, this is from some school of business. We're probably advertising uh, their PGP, some kind of a program in startup leadership. Okay, so just like this ad, you can create your ads for your photography services. For instance, one of the ads that you're seeing in front of you right now is one of my best performing ads where, you know, I'm, I was just running this ad uh, for again for my studio portrait clients. And you can also, so what happens is when you see an ad like this, when you click, either it can take you on that person's website. So again, remember that page that I showed you on my website. When someone was to click here on these ads, you can create the different images and all you can change in the back end of Facebook ads. And when they click, they can come here and hopefully you're hoping that they will book the shoot for you. You can also create WhatsApp ads, okay? So that uh, image that you just saw in front of you, that's actually a WhatsApp ad. In that case, when someone clicks on your ad, they're taken to your WhatsApp account and you can just immediately start chatting with them. So you don't even need a website, okay? So when it comes to Google ads and Facebook ads, uh, I'll be talking about one of my courses towards the end of the video, which teach both of these things and it's meant for photographers only. So it's Google ads and Facebook ads for photographers. So I'll be talking about that course towards the end also. But Facebook ads are also very, very popular. Of course, you have to pay here, but then you can quickly get started. Now let's look at strategy number four. So strategy number four is very similar to the SEO strategy, the strategy number one that we discussed. Uh, the only difference is this time, this is not related to the website, not optimizing your website, but this is related to optimizing your Google My Business listing for your uh, photography business. So let me just show you what I'm talking about by typing in the same thing that we saw in strategy number one. So again, I've typed in that same keyword, but this time what we're interested is this thing that you see. Remember we saw this before also, so you can see my business is also ranking on top here. And the reason for this is because Google My Business is given a lot of preference by Google itself, obviously, especially for these local uh, keywords, okay? So with the local intent, basically, because if someone types in near me, you're basically, you know, the keyword intent is such that the, the person is looking for a service which is uh, geographically near them. And that's where Google My Business listings come into place. You can go to Google My Business, you can actually create your whole listing for your business. It's very, very important that you do that. And a lot of factors will go into play when it comes to the ranking here. For first of all, of course, how relevant your listing or your business is to the keyword that has been timed in, obviously, but also a lot of other things. One is the amount of reviews that you have. So the more the number of reviews you have, it's better. And not just any reviews, of course, good reviews and also uh, what are the keywords that people have written when they're mentioning those uh, reviews? Okay, so if someone had typed in, yeah, I had a great, uh, you know, uh, experience in Kush's photo studio like this. Okay, so photo studio is coming in the review. Google pays a lot of attention to that. So when you have a Google My Business listing, it involves a bit of work because every time you do provide a service, make sure you ask your, you know, uh, the client to give you a review. Like ask them for an honest review and even tell them that, you know, can you write a review like this? Don't tell them that you have to write a five-star review, okay? Because that can be unethical. But at least you can tell them that whatever you type in, can you please put in this keyword? Okay, something like that. That's because that's not unfair and that's not unethical. And also when you're creating your Google My Business profile, again, I'm not showing this right now, okay, because that'll take too much time, but it's fairly straightforward. You can go to Google, type in, you know, I want to you know, create a Google My Business listing and Google will direct you to those pages, basically creating an account on that particular thing. And then there also, just make sure everything is optimized properly, that you're filling in the categories for your Google My Business listing and all these things, okay? But again, very, very powerful strategy to have uh, for local services for sure.
Now let's look at strategy number five. So strategy number five is directory listing. This is something that you've again already seen. Okay, so let me just again go back to Google and you'll understand what this means. So again, we so again, we have this keyword here. If I scroll down, we saw Google My Business listings. We also saw my website here. So you can rank your website. But can you see on top what is ranking is something called as just dial? So in India, just dial is like a directory, okay, of different where you can put your service and it'll you know, just start showing up here like this. So for example, different countries might have uh, a business which is very popular. Like in India, Just Dial is a directory which is very popular. Uh, so if you're in the US or some other country, you'll just have to find out which is the most important directory-based business in your country, okay? And you can probably find that out by doing some Google searches regarding some services and you can just see which is that website which always ranks on top, which looks like a directory where people are putting in their services like this along with their address and all these things, okay? And of course, then what you do is you create an account with these people because usually what happens is uh, they rank quite highly on Google. So if you're there, there's a good chance that you might start to now get some eyeballs of your prospective clients. The downside, however, of this particular strategy is that you're competing with a lot of people. That's the only issue because it's very easy to create listings like this. So you can see like, for example, we just typed in that and now we're getting so many different options here. And then similar principles apply within the website of how things are ranked. So like if a person has a lot of ratings, they're going to start to move towards the top and therefore get more impressions, more eyeballs. Uh, and secondly, most of these directory based businesses will have an option to have premium directory listings. That means you can pay them and go on top just like we just saw with uh, Google ads. Okay. But this is again another option because these Good directories rank pretty high on Google, sometimes more, as we saw, more than the websites, even though the websites might be SEO optimized. And finally, now let's look at the offline marketing strategy also. So I'm not a big fan of offline marketing simply because I don't think it's a very efficient way of doing things. But this can involve like, you know, posting classifieds or advertisements on magazines and newspapers. And to be frank, these days, not just these days, I mean, I would say even like right now we are in 2024, but I would say like probably from the last seven to eight years, uh, this has just declined, okay? Because most of the people are really using the online marketing methods that I've just shown you in the first five uh, strategies because they're just more cost efficient and they're able to reach a lot of more people uh, at a slightly lesser cost. So it's much more efficient. And even from an effort point of view, this can be slightly tough. But one of the things that you can do here, which often works is, especially for local services, and it can work well for photography services that you can print out some nice looking flyers, like get some nice flyers designed, okay? And then have a QR code, which sends, if someone scans that QR code on the flyer, it sends them back onto your website where you have more details about your service, where they can book uh, your services, okay? And you can then start to paste these flyers in areas near your area, wherever you feel a lot of people hang out together. So if there's an area where you feel yeah, a lot of people at uh, in different points of time, they really like to come here like cafes or something like that, some hangout places, you can start putting your flyers, but make sure you have a QR code and not the old ways of having some email address or some number because these days people just like to scan the QR code and then quickly so that you know they can uh, reach wherever and see all the details of your services. But this can also work. Finally, I wanna just talk about some of the resources that can really, really help you in all the things that we discussed here. All right, so what I'm going to do is in order to first of all provide you these resources, I'll just provide you one link. I was initially thinking all these resources and the different links I'll put in the description of the YouTube video that you're watching. But then I thought that, that there'll be a lot of links and can just look very disorganized. So what I'm going to do is instead I'm going to put all these links together on my website, okay, on one of the pages, uh, which I'm soon to make because I'm still making this video. So I haven't made a page, but Ultimately, you will find a link in the description of this video, just one link, which will take you to a page like this on my website, where you'll see the same video, okay, that you're watching. So that video will be here. Once I do make it, this is a different video, but I'm just showing you an example. And underneath that embedded video, there'll be some links like this, like how you can see, okay? And I'll list out all the links like this uh, about the resources, which I'm just gonna be talking about, okay? So what are the different resources which can really, really help you in implementing all these different strategies that we talked about? So let's go to the strategies and let's see 
those resources. All right, so these are the different strategies. Let's see the resources associated with them. Now, the resources can be divided into two things. One is you say, Kush, I want to do these myself. I don't want to pay anyone to do it. Okay, so you are like the DIY type of a person. So I'm going to give you a separate set of resources for the people who want to implement this, but they want to do this on their own. They're willing to take the effort and the time. But there also might be a set of people who don't just don't have the time um, or the inclination to learn these skills. Okay, that can also happen and that's perfectly fine. And that's where something like freelancers or agencies can do this work for you. So first of all, let me talk about the second set of people who want to outsource this work that you've just understood the gist of things, but now you say, Kush, I want to outsource this to a freelancer. Then what is that best website where you can find people who can do this for you? You just give them the instructions and they can do it for you. And moreover, they can do it for you at very, very reasonable rates. So I'm going to show you the best resource for that, which is, so the number one way of getting freelancers to do these things for you is to go to fiverr.com. So again, under that embedded video, you'll find the link to Fiverr. So you can use that. Okay. And here, for instance, you know, you can pretty much search for any type of service. So let's say you want someone to run Google ads for you. You don't want to learn the whole thing. So you can just type in Google ads and you'll see so many freelancers who do this for you at pretty reasonable rates. Okay. And of course you'll have to do, you know, you'll have to kind of just go through their profiles every time you click on them. For example, you can see the work they've done before. Uh, you can read the, uh, you know, the reviews that they've got from other people. You know, but basically this website is great for freelancers. Let's say you want to do SEO, remember that was the first strategy we discussed. You just type in SEO and you find people who will do the whole SEO optimization process for you, okay? You can find people to create websites for you. You can even remember the last strategy we discussed that uh, maybe you want to do that flyer thing. You do want to do some offline marketing, but you'll need a flyer, right? So you can just type in flyer. And here you'll find people who design some amazing looking flyers. They'll do the work for you. They'll put that QR code there for you. And you simply just take out a printout and then start your work, okay? So basically this website is great. I always use this website anytime I need to do something which I'm not good at. And right now I would say this definitely is the number one site to find freelancers to do anything for you. Because the other option then is to find some kind of an agency to do it for you and that's gonna be very expensive. So this is the most cost, of, cost effective method. Now let's go to the second set of people who say that, you know what, I'm willing to do some of those things at least myself. So I'm gonna show you some resources uh, regarding those also. So the resources are in the form of courses. For instance, I've got a course on SEO. It's a, around a two hour long course. You don't always have to just do my course, but the point is the best way to learn SEO is through a course. And something like udemy.com, you can go to udemy.com, search for an SEO course. I would give the link to my own course because I feel it's just a two hour long course and you I've just designed it in such a way that, you know, I've tried to teach SEO in the shortest time frame possible. So under that embedded video, again, you'll find, you'll be able to find the link to my course, SEO course. If not, okay, you can also do someone else's course. I'm not just saying this just to promote my own courses. Okay, you can do someone else's courses also. For Google Ads and Facebook Ads, however, I have a dedicated course for photographers, which is called Google Ads and Facebook Ads for Photographers. So you'll find the link to that particular course also. And there we go really in depth. I literally create these ads right in front of you by going in the backend systems of both Google and Facebook. And there are a lot of strategies that I also tell you. It's not just about creating the ads, like how do you target the right people? How do you do it in a way where where you get the maximum returns on the money that you're spending on these two things. So do check that course out also. It's especially made for photographers, okay? Uh, I don't have a course on Google My Business listing. This is something that I do plan to create, but this is such a deep topic that again, I would recommend that you try to really get good at it by learning it from some sort of a course. So here also you'll find a link to one of the courses that I feel is the best at this, okay? Again, directory listing, there's no resource for this. Just find out the best directory and just put in your services there. That's what I would say, okay? And finally, for offline marketing, like I said, this is not very important these days, but if you're willing to do it, then I've already given you the resource that get your designs made in a professional manner because that's gonna be very, very important and Fiverr will be the best resource for this. And finally, for a lot of these strategies, one of the things that you might require is 
a website, okay? So again, you have two options here. You can either get it made or I also have a course which teaches you how to create a photography website. Like it's dedicated again to the photographers and I have particularly chosen website themes which are, you know, I did a lot of research for this and I cho I've chosen a look and a theme for a website which is absolutely great to show your portfolio work and to showcase your services also. So I'll also leave a link to that particular course on how to create your photography website. But apart from this, you know, that's it for right now. I really hope that you like this video. If you have any questions regarding any of these strategies, then do leave a comment and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.